Let's see here, I really need to up my game on YouTube. So let's find things that are the best. Things that are awesome. Things that are ultimate. Yes. Ultimate, let's see. Ultimate Spider-Man, nah, swipe left. Ultimate Frisbees, maybe another day. Ultimatepeace.org, friendship, non-violence, integrity, mutual respect, and fun. That's pretty special. Oh, yes. I found it. I found the thing. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to Your Everyday Nerd, the show where we give fun facts about the things that we're talking about. Did you know that Elon Musk mains Zero Suit Samus? It's true. And I mean, I can't blame him. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Trendy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. If you're new around here, on Tuesdays we talk about the trendiest of topics. And today we're going ultimate with the ultimate steak burger at IHOP. Wait, wait, wait a second. I thought it was the International House of Pancakes. Serving burgers sounds like a conflict of interest. I'm just kidding. We're saving burger reviews for 2020, so stay tuned. But before that, we're going to take a look at the most ultimate game of 2018, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. Last episode, I talked all about Super Smash Bros. Melee, but it's been 17 years since Melee came out, and we've had two other Smash games since then. And now we have what's considered to be the most ultimate Smash game yet. I mean, it's even in the title, so it's gotta be true, right? My history with Smash Bros. is a bit of a rocky one. I never played a game in the series until 8th grade with Melee. I never had the opportunity to play Brawl except for the single player experience which I played on an emulator on a really shitty laptop at half speed. Don't recommend. But in 2015 I got a Wii U and was able to finally get Smash 4 which I would end up playing a lot in college with a bunch of friends. Now it's 2018. I have a Switch so I'm able to get Ultimate on day one. and. That was really exciting to me. I've been paying attention to all the Nintendo Directs that we've gotten over the last year, and this was easily the most hyped I've been for a Smash game. Now that I have it, and I've played it a decent amount, I'm ready to see if this is truly the most ultimate Smash Brothers experience. I gotta get some water. I'm over here dying. This episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Zach Can't Speak Properly, so I need something to drink. And uh, Mountain Dew Kickstart is the thing to go. Right off the bat, it's clear that Sakurai wanted to make a game that was for everybody. And usually, when somebody tries to make something to please everybody, it doesn't work out too well. Look at uh, look at YouTube Rewind over there. Yeah. Doesn't work out too well. But, oddly enough, Ultimate does a really good job of covering all of its bases. We have 76 playable characters, with at least 6 coming in the future. We have over 100 stages, over 850 music tracks, and a whopping 1,297 collectible spirits. This game is massive. There's an adventure mode with more gameplay than the past two adventure modes combined, classic mode is back and it's better than it ever has been, and there's been an extensive overhaul in the online mode. This is the ultimate Smash experience, and before I criticize its few flaws, if you're gonna play a Smash game, this is the one to do it. There's absolutely no debate about that. In fact, it would be very difficult for me to go back and play one of the past Smash games. Just check my last episode about Melee for that. But while it is Ultimate, there are a few nitpicks that I do have with the game. For starters, there's the online mode. It's very clear that this needs to be fixed as soon as possible. Players are finding it to be extremely laggy, and for a game that requires you to pay an additional fee, a la Nintendo Switch Online, it's actually quite embarrassing that this is as bad as it is. Hopefully Nintendo gets some dedicated servers soon, because peer-to-peer -peer is in no way acceptable at this point. Another main issue that I have is the UI. Ultimate's menu is honestly pretty bad. I mean, I'm playing a game here, and yet there's a section called Games and More. That just sounds dumb. 
Especially when there's another section called Vault, and each of these sections could easily have the exact same content in it. It just doesn't make any sense. But let's go right into the positives. The multiplayer aspect of Ultimate is still just as strong as any Smash game has been. In fact, I think it's better. There's plenty of options for special Smash battles, so if you're super into the multiplayer, you're pretty much covered here. But if you're like me who does enjoy a tailored single player experience, I was extremely surprised by Ultimate single player modes. Before I talk about World of Light, the biggest solo player experience here, I do want to talk about Classic Mode, because while I like Classic Mode for Melee, I never actually played it in Brawl or Smash 4. I, it, was, it was always just okay to me, and yet Classic Mode for Ultimate is so good. Every single character has a different, unique experience. You have different stages and different boss battles tailored specifically for each character. And at the end, there's even an awesome boss fight that's unique to those characters. It's such a great way to play the game. It's also a lot easier to unlock other characters by doing classic mode. So if you're all about the multiplayer stuff and want to unlock characters fast, go do classic mode. But I personally did want to try out World of Light. So I ended up unlocking a lot of characters through World of Light. If I didn't like World of Light, Classic Mode would definitely be the way I'd unlock characters. Now, when I had first heard of Spirits Mode, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit worried. I thought I might not like it. It didn't sound anything like Adventure Mode in Melee. It didn't sound anything like Subspace Emissary in Brawl. I mean, I'm glad there was an Adventure Mode because, you know, Smash for Wii U didn't have anything, but I, it just didn't look like something that I would enjoy. But while I was worried about this mode, and I was also disappointed that we wouldn't get trophies, I'm happy to say that I'm really impressed by Spirits Mode and World of Light. Sure, there's not really that big of a story attached to it like Subspace Emissary does, and while I'm still a bit disappointed that we don't get any like platforming sections, instead we get dozens of special, unique battles that emulate hundreds of popular video game characters. Like that's so dope to me. I also like that we have to unlock every single character except for Kirby in World of Light. It gave me the opportunity to choose between characters that I might not play otherwise, while also waiting for my favorites and the newcomers, making them even more rewarding. Now of course I still have played a lot of Kirby because he's just really fun to play as, but it's a very nice natural progression of unlocking characters. A lot of the new characters you really have to work towards, while older characters you get fairly early on. And since there are so many different spirits, the pacing in World of Light is actually pretty strong, with it very rarely getting tiring because you're constantly seeing new characters and meeting new challenges. Now, there are some battles that are extremely annoying because the way that spirits battles work, oftentimes they resort to gimmicky things like switching your controls or the floor is lava, but when you unlock different spirits, you're able to use those to counteract the challenges that you were once faced with. So while every once in a while you get a battle that's a bit more tough and honestly possibly bullshit, it does feel good to finally beat those. Plus, if you're too much of a bitch to power through a challenge, like I am, you can always go back to those challenges later because there's so many different paths that you can take. I also really like the concept of spirits. Each spirit is a different character from various video games. They each have a different ability, which can help you or sometimes hinder you throughout the gameplay. They're able to be leveled up, which gives you another sense of progression, while also allowing you to choose which spirits you like the most, or choose new spirits at random so that you're constantly leveling up new things and trying new gameplay alternatives. The only thing that I would do differently with the spirits is I, I kind of wish that like trophies in Melee and past games that we got like little informational paragraphs about each individual character. I mean, sure, I can just go Google them, but it'd be really cool to have that inside the game. We also get a skill tree in spirits mode, which is neat. I haven't really felt many big changes with it, but it's a nice addition. But finally, the biggest change to the franchise in Smash Ultimate is the characters. We have so many new characters and every other character from every previous entry. And what I like the most about Smash Ultimate is the way you unlock the characters. See, in Smash 4, most of the roster was already unlocked from the beginning. In fact, there's only eight characters that you unlock. So it's weird that so many of the new characters were already unlocked from the very beginning. 
I mean, sure, this does mean that you get to start with a pretty sizable roster, and you get to go straight into playing with friends, which is basically what Smash for Wii U is for. There's not really much single player content there. But one of the things that I liked from Melee was that you're always unlocking new stuff. And in Smash 4, that just stops really early on. But in Ultimate, there's so much to unlock, to the point where I still haven't unlocked all the characters yet. Not only does this give you a sense of achievement, but it also allows you to play as different characters a lot while building up hype for newcomers. Speaking of the newcomers, while I haven't unlocked all of them yet, I am really happy with what we have. Inkling is a lot more fun than I thought it would be and I'm really excited to play more of it. Simon is my favorite so far of the group. He's just got such an awesome moveset and I'm excited to actually get good at him. I do have Isabelle unlocked and while she's okay, I definitely need to play as her more to figure out like how to play her because I feel like she's going to be one of those that's like hard to master but when you do master her she'll be really good. And unfortunately, I still have to unlock Ridley, King K. Rool, and Incineroar, all three which look really, really fun, so I'm excited to start playing as them. The great thing about Ultimate is that I could probably talk about it all day because it's got so much content packed into it. It's really for everyone. If you're into competitive Smash, you'll love this game. If you're into solo play, you'll love this game. If you're more of a hardcore fan, or a casual fan, or you just like to listen to 800 plus video game songs legally, you'll love this game. It's like Nintendo came to Burger King and was like, yo, we want what you're doing. We want the players to have it their way. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you disliked it, well, I'm sorry. Okay? I try my best. You can hit the dislike button. I will be back for the next episode. We have a special guest. It's going to be a collab. Get hyped for that. I'm really excited. And then we got some Christmas stuff coming up. So um, <laughs> get hyped for that. In the meantime, go ahead and subscribe for more of your everyday nerd. And I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.